Welcome friends, it's Miss Gisa. I'm so excited to share a new book that I just received in the mail. It's called The Mother of Monterey Canyon, a true story of strength and motherhood written by author Katherine Williamson and illustrator Emily Betridge. I love this story and the gorgeous illustrations. You can watch my interview with Kate and Emily and hear about how they created this magnificent story together and how they came up with the idea. Now, before we get started, let's take a look at this map. The story takes place off the coast of California in the Pacific Ocean, specifically Monterey Canyon. The story is about this animal right here. Do you guys know what this is? That's right, it's an octopus. And the story is about an octopus mama. Let's find out what happens. Icy cold water surrounds her. These dark, frigid conditions are her home and all she knows. She is a deep sea octopus. She is comfortable down in these depths, about a mile below the water's surface. She pushes water through the purple mantle and occasionally reaches out for rocks with her eight long arms to glide effortlessly along the ocean floor. She is looking for a very important spot, the most important spot of her life, the spot where she will lay her eggs. Did you know her species of octopus is Granaldone boreos pacifica. Did you know light photons travel through the water for about 3,000 feet before the water goes dark? She has been waiting for just the right time. She has been feeding regularly and hopes that this will provide her with enough energy to get her through her brooding Near the end, she will be tired and weak from brooding for so long. Although this will be the end of her life, she knows that she must lay her eggs for her species to continue. Gracefully, she swims around the rocks, her new home, until the eggs hatch and lowers herself down into the safest outcropping. This is her spot. She will need to stay vigilant to keep crabs and other predators away from her eggs, and she will need to hold on so the ocean currents do not pull her off her nest. Her large eyes allow her to see clearly in the deep ocean. She is far below the surface in Monterey Canyon. The last photons of light have given up. There is no light here. Still, she knows where everything is. The darkness would be disorienting to other creatures but her species has evolved to live in these conditions. She has everything she needs to survive. She begins slowly to lay 160 jelly bean sized eggs. She keeps them tucked below her so her eight arms can hold tight to the rock. She wraps her arms protectively around her special treasures. As the last egg joins its future brothers and sisters on the rock, her body becomes finely tuned to the movement in the water. The temperature changes around her and the sounds of others pulsing, scratching, fluttering, and bubbling in the dark. She must not lose focus. She must not loosen her grip. If she does, all this effort will be for naught. This octopus has a very important and strenuous job in front of her. She must sit on these eggs all day, every day, until they hatch. She will not hunt or feed for the entire time she broods. This is the case for many animals, but for this deep sea mama, that means over four years of sitting in one spot and remaining vigilant. 
Did you know octopus mom's brains shut down most systems to conserve energy while brooding? Only vital systems are at work. Hours turn into days, days become weeks, and weeks stretch into months. And still, she patiently waits, still gripping the rock with all her might. Did you know a deep sea octopus's mantle is about the size of a cantaloupe? Here's a page on the layers of the ocean species in the neighborhood where mama octopus has laid her eggs. So you can see the Pacific Barracuda, the blue whale, as you get deeper, the sea turtle and the chambered nautilus, and deeper yet, the sperm whale, and then the deep sea octopus, way down at the bottom. All about Monterey Canyon. How deep is Monterey Canyon? The Monterey Canyon is so deep, you could fit three Empire State Buildings, plus a little more inside of it. And you can see the map here of the Pacific Ocean right off of the coast of California. And this is what the canyon looks like. At this point, Others who live along the ocean floor have noticed her. Crabs have seen her hunched protectively over her brood, and they crave the taste of a fresh octopus egg. The pickings are slim here at the bottom of the ocean. This crew of crabs has not had a decent meal for months, and they are desperate. One might think that a single mom protecting a clutch of 160 eggs would not be much of a threat to a group of crabs with long arms and pincers. Did you know crabs are scavengers? Usually their diet consists of dead creatures that sink down from near the ocean surface. The ravenous crabs circle the octopus slowly. They are unsure if she sees them. She does not make any indication that she knows they are there in the dark. The circle of crabs creeps slowly closer as the first brave crab reaches in with a trembling pincer to snatch a single delicious egg. The octopus twists her tentacles around the crab's pincer and rips it off. This all happens in the blink of an eye. The octopus does not hesitate. As the crab gets close and reaches in, she pulls their pincers off and discards them around her like petals from a wilted flower. These crabs are no match for this mama. Most die quickly and others limp off in hopes of finding less defensive prey. Did you know lithodid crabs are the main predator of brooding Boreo Pacifica? With crab parts strewn around her, she begins to gently wave her arms over her eggs. This motion moves water over the eggs to brush sediment off and allow much needed oxygen to soak into the eggs. This octopus mom can go from warrior to nurse in a matter of moments. Did you know octopus have eight arms with two rows of suckers on each arm? Months become years. The world above continues without noticing her. The mother of Monterey Canyon, down in the depths of the ocean, remains alone on her rock with 160 eggs. She sits, unbothered, unrushed, and waits for her little ones to emerge. Although the crabs have moved on, this strenuous journey is long from over for this octopus. Her body begins to change. Her eyes begin to cloud over. This white film might make it difficult to watch for predators. Her once purple skin turns white as well, and her once strong arms become weak. She begins 
to look old and weary. And you can see here in this illustration what she looks like in year one, then year two, year three, and then four. You can really see the changes in her color, both in her body and her eyes. And still, she waits. Will she be able to hold on until the end? Or will the ocean current pull her from her perch before the eggs begin to hatch? Maybe more crabs will come across her in this weakened state and make a snack out of the brood she had protected for so long. Perhaps she will give in to her hunger and leave the eggs in search for food. After four and a half years, Mama can no longer see. Her vital life systems are fading. She will need to rely on other senses to know when her eggs hatch. Did you know the hatchlings of Boreo Pacifica are the largest and most developmentally advanced coleoid cephalopod? There is a slight movement below her where there has only been stillness before. It starts in one spot and begins to spread. The shifting movement turns into a tickle. Little arms reach out and touch her. Somewhere deep within her, she wonders, is it time? Are they really here? The few tickles become over a thousand arms reaching out to let her know, we are here, you can let go now. She uses the last of herself to feel that they have all hatched. The babies are born fully developed. They follow their natural instincts and swim out from under her into the safety of the rocks. Once the last one finds a new shelter, Mama lets go. Her pale white body drifts away like a ghost in the current. The mother of Monterey Canyon is gone. Yet, this is not the end of the story. This is just the beginning. 160 new lives stretch their tentacles between the rocks in search of something to eat. Did you know larvae or hatchlings eat bits of shrimp they find floating in the ocean current or left behind from other predators? And here is a gorgeous illustration of an octopus with its different parts, an octopus's anatomy. Let's take a look. You can see the stomach at the top and the mantle, the heart and the liver and the gills, the digestive gland and eye and the mantle split all on top. Then if you move down, you can see the arms and the suckers, the beak and the siphon. Our planet needs you. There are so many wonderful animals on our planet. Many, like the octopus you just read about, are still being studied by scientists. There is so much we still do not know about our world. Let's keep the homes of these animals clean and safe for them to live and thrive, so we may all enjoy them for many centuries to come. Here are some ideas of what you can do. On your own, you can pick up trash on a walk. Turn off the lights when you leave the room. Turn off the water when you're brushing your teeth. Make sure to use a trash can or recycle bin for your garbage. Use both sides of paper and use scratch paper for art projects. Walk or ride your bike instead of asking for a ride in the car. And read to find out more about animals and plants and what you can do to help. Maybe some of you may become scientists and help the planet and the animals. As a family, you can do these things together. You can participate in your city's recycling program. Avoid using single materials like water bottles, napkins, towels, and dishes. Walk or ride a bike instead of driving a car. Purchase items in bulk instead of single serving sizes. You can plant a tree. Have meatless Mondays where you don't eat any meat. 
Encourage each other's curiosity in the natural world. And then there's an index and glossary to help you with some words if you don't know some of the big words that are in this story. And then in the back, there's a little bit more about the authors, Catherine Williamson and illustrator Emily Betridge. And don't forget, listen to the interview because it's really fun that I was able to have them both on to tell us about their wonderful book. Thanks for joining me in this deep sea adventure today. See you again soon. Thank you for joining me today. Remember to like and subscribe to support our channel.